Hi, I'm Robert. I'm a technologist for Cloud Native at ITQ. At ITQ, we have over 25 people globally doing Cloud Native projects. Today, I'm going to tell you about how to enable Kubernetes in VMware Cloud Foundation and VMware vSphere Foundation. So when you have VCF or VVF, you have the right to run a Kubernetes distribution. Now, this used to be called vSphere with Tanzu. But this naming is changing. It's no longer called this. It's now called the vSphere EAS control plane. Interesting name, but it makes sense, and I'll explain that in a second. In order to enable the vSphere EAS control plane, we start with the element we all know, an ESX cluster. When we enable the vSphere EAS control plane on ESX, it adds a number of VMs, which we call the supervisor control plane VMs, and it turns your ESX cluster into what we call the supervisor. With the supervisor, we're able to do a number of things. First of all, we can run something called vSphere pods. So what are vSphere pods? vSphere pods are basically containers that run directly inside ESX. Here's a pod. Through the supervisor, we run them directly in ESX. This is a great way of easily getting containers to run in ESX directly. This is ideal for simple container workloads. And when you run containers in this way, they show up in the vSphere UI. Um, it's very transparent and very familiar to vSphere admins what's going on. They basically look and behave as if they are VMs. But increasingly, Kubernetes native applications require a Kubernetes cluster, a full cluster, to run. But increasingly, cloud native application architectures assume a complete Kubernetes cluster. So of course, what you can do with the ES control plane is create an entire Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster using a service built into the supervisor, the TKG service, TKGS. And with the TKGS service, we can provision an entire Kubernetes cluster very easily through the supervisor control plane. And these run as VMs on ESX. And this is a completely conformant Kubernetes cluster. It behaves like any other Kubernetes cluster in the world which means any cloud native application architecture you load into these clusters, you could run anywhere else, making your application quite mobile and giving you a lot of flexibility. And finally, what we can also do with the supervisor is something we're already quite familiar with. We can run VMs. Now, of course, we could already do this with vSphere. What's new about this? What's new about this in vSphere U3 is that you can use the supervisor to define a VM in a Kubernetes native way. This allows you to use the same infrastructure as code and GitOps practices to run both VMs, Kubernetes clusters, and individual containers and provision them to the supervisor, to the EAS control plane in the same consistent way. So what kind of deployment topologies can we use with the ES control plane? Well, there are different ways we can install this. The most straightforward is that we have a single cluster deployment. In this mode, we take a single ESX cluster and we enable it for this workload, Kubernetes native workload management using the ES control plane. If you have two data centers, 
and from vSphere 8 U3 onwards. The AS control plane is also supported on a vSphere stretch cluster. We have DC1, and we have DC2. You will still need to provide your own storage replication between the sites. This is most commonly solved with using vSAN, of course. And in this mode, the IS control plane, the supervisor control components, they exist in one of the two data centers, but you can spread workloads amongst the two data centers. And then finally, and this is probably the most resilient deployment model that's offered, is you can have what they call a zonal deployment. If you have three data centers or three availability zones, the supervisor control plane is automatically stretched across all three locations. And for every Kubernetes cluster you deploy, the control plane for each Kubernetes cluster is also deployed automatically across the three locations. And of course, all workloads are then also stretched across the three locations. This deployment mode in particular is most similar to what you could expect from a public cloud, such as AWS or Azure. When running Kubernetes, load balancing is very important. Kubernetes is, after all, a distributed architecture. For load balancing, there are two integration options that are supported with the ES control plane. If you are already running NSXT, then the ES control plane can leverage NSXT for many network services, including load balancing. But there's also the option to integrate with the advanced load balancer, formerly known as the AVI load balancer. So what does the network topology look like? We require at minimum three networks, a management network, a network for the load balanced virtual IPs, and one or several workload networks. When we activate the supervisor, when we install the IS control plane, the supervisor components itself, <clears throat> they connect to both the management network and the workload network. We need the advanced load balancer to exist before we instantiate the IS control plane. That consists of a set of controllers that sit on the management net network. And when we take our ESX cluster and enable it for the supervisor, load balancer objects are automatically created by the advanced load balancer. And they show up on our virtual IP network as endpoints. To service these endpoints, the advanced load balancer creates what we call service engines. And they connect to this VIP network to serve these virtual IPs. And then we can create Kubernetes clusters. And this is where our workload network comes in. A Kubernetes cluster is just a bunch of VMs. They sit in the workload network, but users interact with them coming in through the virtual IP. So you get a nice clean network separation this network topology gives a nice clean separation between ingress and where workloads are actually running. If you want to know more about how to enable Kubernetes on VCF or VVF, please reach out to us. I'd be more than happy to go into a lot more detail than what we can cover in a single Lightboard video. Thank you for watching.